And we're back. Welcome back and happy Thursday. Today, we will talk about the final project, namely Carbox. But before we begin some administrative bits, there is no reading. It's all done. Congratulations. Today is the final day. Reading day, of course, is tomorrow, Friday, and the scheduled final exam period will be doing project presentations. That will be Tuesday, the 8th of December, in the block of time between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. The last day of finals will be a week from tomorrow, the 11th, and where your final project will be due electronically at 8 p.m. All right, so why don't we begin? Welcome to Carbucks, the curious coffee shop that's eerily similar to a popular national chain that also offers automotive services. And so this is on the menu. We have hot coffee, sandwiches, cold coffee beverages, pastries, quick wash, a quick wax, and five gallons of gas. These are the prices specified, and these are the costs and the respective profits. Now, of course, the assignment is for you to answer questions, but let's talk a little bit about useful things to help you come up with a solution, design an experiment. And so Carbucks, also the linkages that determine whether or not a customer buys a certain item. Some items are freestanding, like a hot coffee beverage, a 60% probability someone's going to buy the hot coffee. But other items are dependent, namely a sandwich, Probability is one eighth point one two five or twelve and a half percent probability that someone's going to buy a sandwich when they come to Carbucks, and that probability doubles if someone has bought a cold beverage. And so the thing to pay attention to is when you see all of the items for sale, to think about the probabilities associated with a customer choosing an item for all of the items available. And then those items that are dependent, you do them secondly, you, you simulate them after those items whose purchase probabilities are not dependent on another outcome. How in the world am I going to do that? Where do you start? That's a very good question. Do not fret. Do not stress. We can decompose this piece by piece. You use a market basket. Hmm. Well, what is a market basket? Glad you asked. A market basket or commodity bundle is nothing more than a fixed list of items in given proportions. Hmm. All right. Well, there's a market basket. We have all of the items that are offered by Carbox. You have your hot coffee, beverage, sandwich, cold coffee beverage, pastry, quick wash, quick, quick wax, and the five gallons of gas. Now, in this particular basket, you'll notice that a certain number of each item is in the basket. So you then take your basket, you take your price sheet, look at what's in the basket, and you price out the value of the items in the market basket. Okay. Well, certainly, you can all do this in MATLAB. But let's look a little bit more into what happens with that basket. And so when you're going to fill the basket, each customer that comes along fills the basket, the market basket. And you're going to fill this market basket probabilistically by sampling. Well, the steps include first modeling the customers that come into the shop. And there's a schedule of arrivals in the specification for the assignment for the customers. Then for each customer, you fill a basket, your market basket, and then you price out its value. And over time, as the simulation proceeds over the course of a day, over the course of a week, so have you, you get money accumulated, total cost and profit, and you can certainly calculate the averages from that. Okay, so those are the steps. You Meet your customers, simulate your customers. Each customer fills a basket. Then you price the value of that basket given 
the pricing sheet. Ah, so that's it. You count customers. Each customer fills the basket. And then you price out the basket. Now that's stochastic thinking. So let's take a look briefly in MATLAB at some structures that will help us to implement the market basket. Now, absolutely, you could use a different array, but it's kind of nice touch to have them all together. So let's go to MATLAB and I'll meet you there. So we're in MATLAB and create a new file, Carbucks Demo, and I'm going to talk about something called a struct. Now, a structure in MATLAB is just like a struct in C, and it's almost like a class in Java, but you don't have any method, and all of the instance variables are public. Now, in a struct, let's call it a basket, and you just type the name, basket, dot, that basket is the structure name, and the variable that comes after the dot is the name of the item. So let's define a couple Booleans, and we're going to define two items in the market basket, different from what the assignment is. Is Apple, we're going to start everything out as false, and that's going to be a Boolean variable Apple, and if it's false, means that there are no apples that were selected. Now, in addition to that Boolean is Apple, we're going to have the number of apples. Basket num apple equals zero initially. We can also initialize the basket with other things. Basket dot is, let's say, paper towels. Paper towels. Those are scarce these days. False. And then we say basket dot num paper towels equals zero. So you can define this struct. And let me just add another statement. Display done. And we'll look at the structure. So I'm going to set a breakpoint. I'm going to run. And when we look at basket, you'll see it's a structure with a bunch of fields. So now that the structure is created, you don't have to allocate it. It's done as you define the fields, which is weird from a programmatic standpoint if you're used to things like C and Java. But it creates it on the fly both with the types as well as the names as you specify. So now I could go ahead and I could populate this basket and then price it out. Another thing that I can do with a struct is I can talk about for a number of customers, I can say customer baskets, for example, and I can turn that into an array, but I don't even have to define the array. Let's say if I have a number of customers, num customers equals say three and i say four customer goes from one increment by one to num customers okay and and i'm just going to populate a couple of these values so the first customer i'm going to say customer I'm going to make it an empty cell array. Customer baskets is equal to empty cell array. And now I'm going to say customer baskets is equal to, or rather, the C1. Now, assuming this is a struct, I'll say is Apple for the first customer if and I'm just going to set up some dummy values. If C is equal to 1, then do one thing. Else, if C is equal to 2, do something else. Otherwise, do something else. Else if. There we go. Else. So now, if... It's the first customer. Let's say I'm going to set my basket so that the first customer, let's say the first customer has two apples. So is apples true? And customer baskets
let's say is apple um, num apples num apple is equal to let's say c and then let's say this one has paper towels customer baskets see what our error is okay it's a warning customer baskets is paper towels is true and customer baskets num paper towels equals let's say two two of them now let's populate the basket for the second customer and the third customer and we're going to set them differently so let's say the second customer has apples but no towels false and we set the number to zero and then the third one has towels but no apples so apples are false some apples zero towels is true let's say towels equals C all right so now that we've done this now I'm populating the market baskets very simple ones just two items i'm populating them explicitly in a loop but you can certainly populate them probabilistically based on the problem specification all right so let's save this let's run it and let's look at our data structure our customer basket if we look at customer baskets open that it's a one by three cell array. So it's a, an array of three different structures, the first one, second one, and the third one. If we look at the first one, is apple is one, true. Num apples is one. Is paper towels true? Num paper towels is two. All right, so that's the first customer. The second customer has an apple, two of them, no paper towels. And then the third customer has no apples. So is apples false? zero num apple zero is paper towels is one true and num paper towels is three exactly as you'd expect now the only difference between what I'm doing here and what you'll be doing here I populate them based on hard-coded if it's first one second and third one you will populate them based on the outcome of a probabilistic model for the different items and respecting the linkages all right, so that's a struct, and it's a wonderful way to represent a market basket. And then you pass the struct into your pricing function, and you return back a value. All right, so let's meet back in PowerPoint. I'll see you in PowerPoint. So we just demonstrated structs in MATLAB, an array of structs. You can grow the array incrementally just by indexing one more than the number of items in the array and it automatically allocates a new element in the array by using dot you create the variable and you're just being consistent with the variable names to match your model for the market basket all right so that's our demonstration of structures in MATLAB. now most importantly this last thing remember the golden rule if you launch a car bucks i get 10 percent all right so with that, that's all I had. You are to congratulate yourselves. We've covered a lot of stuff, especially in light of this most unusual semester being online in the midst of a historic pandemic. Uh, so I'm proud of your efforts. I congratulate you. And as I say at the end of each segment, please stay healthy, 